how much Manchester United will have to pay to sack Eric Ten Hag as the pressure continues to mount on the Dutchman at Old Trafford. The fee Manchester United would have to pay to sack Eric Ten Hag has been revealed, with the heat rising at Old Trafford after a number of poor results. United have lost their last two home games 3-0 to Manchester City and Newcastle in the space of four days, and are heading into a tricky run of fixtures running up to Christmas. As such, pundits and former United players alike are increasingly more often expressing concern for Ten Hag's future at the club. That being said, there has been no indication from the club themselves that the Dutchman's position at the helm is in immediate danger. Despite the travails of this season, Ten Hag's success of last term surely remain in the mind of club chiefs, having ended their six-year trophy drought and returned the Red Devils to the Champions League. Given his annual wages of around pound nine million a year at the club, according to The Athletic, the decision to sack Ten Hag would ultimately cost United around pound 15 million, with 20 months still remaining on his initial three-year deal. But it would likely not just be Ten Hag that is removed from his post, having brought Mitchell van der Gaag and Steve McLaren with him to the club, with compensation also set to be paid for them to leave. The fee paid to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was somewhat lower, believed to be around pound 10 million for the Norwegian and members of his staff. However, Jose Mourinho's compensation package was reportedly 19.6 million pounds. Though not as much as the special one's fee, pound 15 million is still a considerable outlay for a club that have seen their warchest diminished of late, and it is thought that only around pound 40 million remains of available credit. Should the club therefore decide to part with Ten Hag, which they have made no indication of thus far, it could prove a costly one, given their limited finances. Meanwhile, the Daily Mail report that Eric Ten Hag is still playing a key role in transfer recruitment and contract extensions at the club ahead of the window. Despite the Dutchman coming under increased pressure following a poor start to the season, the club will look to back him in January. And it is understood that the board are willing to give Ten Hag the necessary money to make signings going forward to turn the club's fortunes around. Again and again. Manchester United fans sent Sir Jim Ratcliffe warning amid ongoing takeover uncertainty. Ineos, led by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, are poised to secure a 25% stake in Man United. Former Manchester United centre-back Mikel Silvestre has suggested that patience will be required if Ineos secures a 25% stake in the club. It is understood the chemical giant, led by British billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe, is edging closer to securing investment in the club, believed to be worth £1.3 billion. Ineos is the leading contender after Qatari banker Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani withdrew from the takeover race last month. Ineos already has investments in elite-level sport, including football, purchasing French side OGC Nice back in 2019. Under their stewardship, the League One club has made gradual progress, currently finding themselves top of the League One table this season, one point ahead of Paris Saint-Germain. Nice supporters have shown signs of discontent towards Ineos and Ratcliffe in recent years, though with many believing progress should have been quicker and more forthcoming because of the financial clout available to them. However, Silvestre, who spent nine years at Old Trafford, believes the company is still finding its feet in the world of sport, highlighting why patience will be needed if they strike a deal with the Glazers. When you have clubs like Lyon, Bordeaux, Saint-Étienne, who are monsters in the history of French football, it is difficult, said Sylvestre, speaking to bettingexpert.com. Bordeaux is down, Saint Etienne is down, and Lyon are last in the table. So if you look at this perspective, they've done okay at Nice. But yes, they're still learning about this specific sport. They've got experience in other domains, and you can transfer that knowledge, but football is a different beast. Coming from France to Man United, everything is different. From the history of the club, to the magnitude, the status, and the expectations. There will be a learning process because if you're thrown at the deep end like this, it's extremely challenging. A lot of anger and frustration has been vented towards Ineos and Ratcliffe during their premiership at Nice so far, mainly because they have not chucked as much money at new players as most supporters would have wished for. However, Silvestre has pointed out the strict financial rules in place in French football. He added, Look, Nice, this season, they're doing well, 
On the other side, Sunsport has taken a look at the seven managers that could replace Eric Ten Hag should he be sacked as Manchester United manager. Graham Potter currently leads the race, and it is understood prospective owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe is a fan of the Englishman. Also in the frame are Roberto De Zerbi, Zinedine Zidane, and Diego Simeone. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag admits he understands those who have criticized him. However, he asserted his confidence in being able to turn results around. He said, I understand that when the results are not there, that this is also a logical process that they question the manager, he continued, but I'm confident I can do it. At all my clubs I have done it, and also last year I did it here as well. But in this moment, we are in a bad place. I take responsibility for it. I see it as a challenge. I'm a fighter, and I'm in a fight, and I have to make sure that I share responsibility with my players, and that we stick together and fight together, and get better results. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag has declared he is not backing away from the challenge he faces at Man United after back-to-back -back three, zero defeats to Man City and Newcastle. Speaking in his post-match press conference, he said, I'm a fighter, and I know it's not always going up. We have had a lot of setbacks this season so far, but also then you have to deal with it, and that is never an excuse. When there are setbacks, when the routines in the way of play are not similar, not the same, but even then you have to get the results in. Obviously, Sunday and tonight were far from our standards. We have to do things right and at a certain level, at a minimum level, to win games. Elsewhere, the odds on Eric Ten Hag to be the next manager to be sacked have been slashed by various bookmakers. Bettingsites.co.uk now have the manager as 6-5 to be the next to go, with the Dutchman overtaking relegation threatened Paul Heckingbottom. Neil Rorty, spokesperson for bettingsites.co.uk, said, Eric Ten Hag was yesterday considered an outsider to be the first Premier League manager to leave their post this season at 8-1, but after last night's chastening defeat to Newcastle at Old Trafford, the Dutchman is now our 6-5 favorite to depart Manchester United. There are three good reasons why Manchester United should not sack Eric Ten Hag overspending, regressing, tactically baffling and regularly losing. But Man United have to hold their nerve with Eric Ten Hag. A former military police officer followed Eric Ten Hag into the press conference room on Wednesday evening. It had been another criminal performance by Manchester United. The club's latest managerial spiral has shades of Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho, with a dash of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ten Hag's has been particularly sudden. Ten Hag does not consider himself one of Van Gaal's disciples, but he sounded as delusional as his compatriot in the wake of the Manchester Derby, claiming United were on the way up. 72 hours later, Ten Hag was no longer in denial. He mentioned the word responsibility five times and admitted United's performances are below the standards after a second successive three, zero thumping at Old Trafford. The dressing room unrest is reminiscent of Mourinho's final months, and United's defending is as porous as the final weeks of Solskjaer's tenure. United lost more games than they had when Solskjaer filmed his exit interview two years ago, and now for the possible winter of discontent. Five of United's next six matches are away from Old Trafford, not necessarily a negative, given they have lost five of their ten fixtures at Old Trafford this season. Yet United's away form under Ten Hag is dire. Twelve defeats in the Premier League and European competitions, and only ten wins out of a possible 23 in the league. It is also worth noting the destinations United are due at over a 39-day period from next week. Copenhagen, Everton, Istanbul, Newcastle and Liverpool. It is a treacherous period. The Park and Stadium in Copenhagen is an atmospheric ground, and United have no respite after the November internationals. There were soulless surrenders under David Moyes, Solskjaer and Ralph Rangnick at Goodison Park. Galatasaray's fans will welcome United back to hell, and three days later, it is St. James Park at 8 p.m. on a Saturday. United have won one of their five games against Newcastle since they were taken over. Then there are consecutive midweek matches against Chelsea and Bayern Munich at Old Trafford before a daunting return to Anfield, where Liverpool have won by an aggregate scoreline of 11-0 in their last two home strolls against United.